In this video, I'm going to show you how to remove a traditional uh, original DMD and replace it with a pin to DMD color display. First thing to do is to obviously take the speaker panel out and place it on a soft surface on top of your pinball machine face down. And that will show you where the ribbon cable is that uh, tells DMD what to do uh, and the power cable. So simply remove the power cable and remove the ribbon cable. Once you remove the cables, you simply remove the four bolts that hold the current DMD in place. I use an 8mm socket to do that. Just obviously pop it on top and away you go uh, and remove all four. When you've removed the bolt, it's a good idea to take the washer off as well because that's going to come in handy. Sometimes the washers stick to the card. So what I found is if you lift the card up, it's then easier to peel away the washer and then just pop the card back down again. It's just a protective layer for the PCB on the, on the old DMDs. The next step is to carefully lift up your old DMD. Uh, these can get quite stuck down after 20 or 30 years of being there. So what I've found is you've got to kind of really take one edge, get your fingers underneath and just gently uh, persuade it to, to start to lift up and you'll find that it starts to come up. So that's one side and then do the same on the other side. It can be quite tough, uh, but that is the only thing, uh, those four bolts holding the whole panel in place. So you're just gonna have to be brave and, uh, and continue to persuade it to come out. And eventually the whole thing lifts out in one piece. And it might be a bit grimy like that one. All right, next step. So now you've got your DMD out and you can see your speaker panel is all there ready for it for your new one to go in. Now's probably a good time to just clean out that Perspex from this side uh, before your new colour display goes in there. There's nothing worse than seeing it all grimed up once it's in place. So do that and then simply with the Evo boards, they're made exactly to insert into those uh, bolts that you just removed the old DMD so you can see it perfectly aligns. On both sides pretty simple and then essentially you just pop the washer on the bolt on this side of the PCB and then you can put your nuts on there too and give it a snug tightening with an 8 mil socket so there's really no need to give it too much of a, a tighten up just literally finger tight or just a touch more I don't think there's anything really needed for it to be super tight Now's a good time to notice which way I've orientated the board. So obviously it needs to be set in the right position so everything's in the right way up. So what you'll find is that the ribbon cable is pretty much in the same place as where the old DMD was, down at the bottom of the speaker panel. At the top of the speaker panel, where the trans light will insert, that's where you'll see the micro SD slot, the USB slot and the configuration buttons. They go across what I would consider the top of the speaker panel. Uh, so that's pretty much the only way around. And obviously you want the, uh, the the dot matrix display pointing outwards, not inwards. Okay. So the next step is really to pop the, uh, the ribbon cable back in. Uh, and you'll see that the pin one position is marked with a red um, core on the cable. That goes on the, on my left hand side as I'm looking at the board. Yep, as you can see there, and that just pops in. So give it a nice firm push and that should go in there fine. Next step is to connect a 12 volt power supply. Okay, so it's important that you use the 12 volt input on the board for Williams machines. Uh, so this is the connector down in the bottom right hand corner of the board. Uh, there are actually two available. Um, it doesn't matter which one you use. They, um, if you're using this in a stern uh, pinball machine, I believe uh, the 5 volt input is best to use. Um, so it, it's important to know what voltage you're dealing with. Um, but w if you are using a Williams Valley machine, it, it is really necessary to use the 12 volt input as driving it from 5 volts on, on a Williams Valley can cause you uh, technical problems. So uh, simply take the power cord that you should have got with your with your board Pop that on the socket and you'll see there that obviously red um, connects to the 12 volts and black connects to ground. 
So now the next thing we have to do is find a 12 volt power supply on our pinball machine. And this is probably the trickiest part. Uh, it might need some help from members to figure out where the best place to get 12 volts is from your specific machine. I'm putting this into a WPC89 machine. So I'm gonna connect this into the driver board. I'll do that next. So here we have our power connector, as you saw previously. And at the other end, we've got basically a wire that's looking for plus 12 volts on the red and ground on the black. So what we can do is find an empty connector that's got 12 volts on it. Uh, if you're fortunate to do that, then it's simply a matter of finding the corresponding connector and crimping that onto the red and the black. If you don't have an available connector, then you're going to have to sort of tap onto an existing cable or install a secondary power supply, which I will not cover. Uh, but that is another option that you might want to think about. All right, so there's a scary sight. There's all of your cables going into your driver board on a WPC89 machine. And uh, I know from looking at the pin to DMD website that on that board, basically, I can choose any of these three connectors to take my 12 volt power supply. So that is basically 16, 17 and 18. Now they're all occupied obviously. So I don't have the option of putting a new connector onto any of these because they're already occupied. So what I'm gonna have to do is choose one of these to tap the 12 volt power supply. And it looks like that's the best one for me. That's in socket number 17, 117. Uh, so I'm gonna take some wire taps and connect, jump onto those cables basically. I'll show you how to do that. So this is a cable tap, pretty simple bit of kit effectively small it's got two slots in it one slot is wide open the second slot is actually only one way that, that's kind of blocked on one end if you can see so it's blocked one end um, and and open the other so what happens is you connect the open end to your existing cable and you connect the closed end to your pin to dmd power cable so i'm going to use this one for the ground and effectively my ground cable the black one from my new power cable is going to go in the upper slot and then the lower slot will uh, take on the existing cable that plugs into the P into the pcb then you take a pair of pliers and you squeeze down the metal tab and that basically provides a connection between the top slot and the bottom slot then you insert this little plastic cover around the top and it clips down underneath on the bottom i'll show you how to do that a little bit tricky doing this with uh, one hand doing your camera and another one doing the, the, the wiring job but you can see here I've got one end in that uh, that slot and then the, the open slot there is available to insert the current cable into position so I'll just do that and squeeze that top metal tab down with a pair of pliers so there it is in place you can see I've squeezed down the metal tab and I've got a good connection now on both sides and then effectively just take the little plastic cover that is here and just fold him across to cover up that plastic that metal tab and that is your tap for the ground side of your power cable in place so now what i've got to do is match up the second one here all right let's do that so that's the second one in place just a couple of tips i try and uh, tap in as near the connector as possible that way, if you want to revert back to standard, you're not losing a lot of wire. You just snip it off and then push it back down inside the connector and remove, obviously, your tap. Uh, obviously, it's, it's easy as well if you take the connector out of the board um, before trying to connect all this up and then obviously pop the connector back into the board. So again, just fold the tap, the cover over. Don't forget to do that. You don't want any anything exposed onto that. And then pop the connector back into place. So here's my um, micro SD card. You don't need a very big one. I, in fact, there's only two files on there and they're very small. They need to be called pin to DMD and their extension or the dot uh, type is either is two. There's PAL and FSQ. So those are the two files that must be on the uh, SD card. They've got to be in the root directory. Without that, uh, you're not going to get the right colorization on your animations and on your uh, DMD. 
it will work but it'll be uh, it'll just be a four color mode so you just pop that in pretty simple uh, you slide it in and then you push it it'll click and then stays in place to remove it push it in it clicks and it pops out and you can take it out so pretty simple so that's him in there what we'll do now put it back together okay then the moment of truth here's uh, here's confidence for you so turning it on for the first time since installing it so you can see it turned it powered up that's a good sign everything seems to be operational all right and we've got a color dmd how awesome is that let's see how badly i can play this game on the first time with a color dmd let's go i think agree that colour makes it really stand out. Play with one hand here. Alright, let's see if we can get that supercharger going. Oh, damn it. Alright, but that's it, basically. Hope you enjoy your pin to DMD experience. It really doesn't take you very long. Uh, that was pretty much real time for me. Um, I think it took me a minute or two just to put on those taps. But apart from that, it's about a 20 minute job. Okay, have fun. Talk to you later.